With literally thousands of classic games to choose from, retro gaming is one of the most fun things you can do with your computer. But getting everything set up can be a hassle, at least up until now. Let me show you the easiest way to get all the arcade, console and home computers running on your PC. Hi and welcome to Bites and Bits. Once you've tried retro gaming, there is no turning back. It's great fun and there are thousands of great games to relive or to find for the first time. But getting all the games and emulators set up and working on your PC can be a bit of a faff. So in this video, I'll show you the easiest way to turn your PC into a retro gaming powerhouse and all using totally free software. So to be able to run old computer games on your PC, you need an emulator and then some game software. So the emulator allows your PC to pretend that it's either the real arcade machine or the console hardware. And this then allows the game software to run as if it were being loaded into the actual machine it was designed for. So the upshot of this is that you can play the games using the original software as if your PC was, for example, a real PlayStation. Now on top of this, it's a good idea to have some sort of management or front end system that can organize your games and emulators so you can simply point and click at the game you want to play without having to load up the right emulator and then import the software and so on and so on. So for this tutorial, I'll show you the very easiest way to bypass all the hassle and get a complete gaming system up and running in just a few minutes. So we'll be using a free package called Launchbox so this is currently only available for the PC, so I'll cover Linux and Apple setups in a different video. So Launchbox has had a number of upgrades over the last few months to automate the installation of all the correct emulation software, making the process a series of simple mouse clicks. So let's get started. So we first need to download the Launchbox application itself. So if you head to the web address launchbox-app.com, that will take you to the main website. Go to the download page for the um, Windows. And from there, you'll simply need to fill in your email address and click the download button. Now that will send you an email which will contain a link to actually download the installation um, file for the application. So once that's downloaded, we simply then need to open that and that should start the installation process for us. The only thing I really um, change whenever we're installing it from the default options is that Launchbox will install itself into a folder. Now Launchbox is self-contained so that once we have installed it, we can actually copy it to other computers, but only if we have everything in one self-contained unit. So I tend to put this onto its own um, folder um, on one of my disks rather than in my user area. So I'm just gonna browse through here and drop it onto one of my disks. Um, so I've set up this retro gaming one here, and if I click in here, it will now set it up in a launchbox folder inside my retro gaming folder. So as Launchbox is installing, it does need a couple of extra bits of software to help it run. So we have our Microsoft Direct X, uh, and that will then install an updated version of that. So please do let that work its way through. So once that's installed, it should automatically start up the application and take you to this getting started screen. Now obviously if it doesn't auto start, just simply use your Windows menu and start from there. And really what it's saying here is that you just installed me, I don't have any games loaded yet, so, so let me help you get that set up. And as you can see, there are a lot of options here. Uh, Launchbox not only connects to your retro games, but can also help you manage a lot of your other um, sort of online games from, from EA Sports and, and so on. 
Um, but we're really going to concentrate, as I said, on the retro gaming, which is these top two options here. Now, obviously, to be able to install some games, we need to have some game ROM files. And, and again, unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly where to get these. Um, they're, they're not hard to find. Um, uh, simply doing a Google search will pretty much turn them up for you instantly. Um, now, it, it used to be a lot easier to get hold of these ROMs from a, we a website called MU Paradise, um, which did have almost like a full set of ROMs available for you to download. Um, but that isn't working at the moment. Th th though I did do a little um, programming tutorial based on MU Paradise, which, which you might find interesting to have a look at. And I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But um, I've already got some ROM files saved here. So if I bring this across, uh, I've got my retro gaming system setting up here and I have a number of folders here where I have some games. So I'm going to take you through setting up um, a few systems to show you the basic process. Uh, and really, once we've got that done, um, you can really just take any system you want, bang some games into it, and you should have that console up and running almost instantly. So we're going to start with um, an easy one, uh, and that is a, a Super um, Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, so if I go into here, you'll see that I have downloaded a, a few games for that. So we have these ROMs all ready to run. Uh, and all we need to do now is to get them into LaunchBox. Now, LaunchBox itself is not an emulator. It is a front end for your emulator systems. So at the moment, not only do we not have any games, but we don't have any software to run those games. Now, now previously, you would have had to go off and find your emulators, install them, link them into LaunchBox, and then start bringing your games in. Um, but LaunchBox has made that process a whole lot easier. So the two emulators which we're really going to focus on uh, and the ones which LaunchBox will use for you are RetroArch, which will cover basically all of our consoles and home computers, and then MAME, which will cover our arcade games. So our SNES, of course, is uh, one of our game consoles. So we're going to just sort of import some ROM files here. Um, so basically anything to do with arcade comes in through MAME. Anything else really is gonna come in through this import ROM files. So I'm gonna select the import ROM files. And this wizard now is gonna take us through the whole process of getting everything set up. So we just click on next. So we're going to first of all go and grab those folders. So I'm going to say I'm going to add some files. I'm going to come into my uh, retro gaming system, into games and Super NES. I'm going to select all of those files and open them. So we can see them now listed in here. And these are the games I'm going to bring into my LaunchBox installation. So if I click on Next... So LaunchBox has had a look at those files and it's correctly identified them as a, as a Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, now if it, if it didn't correctly identify them, obviously you can use the drop down box here to, to tell it which particular system these are for. Um, but again, it, it's, it's very good at identifying these things. So click on Next. Now it's obviously then, this is our fresh install. And it's basically saying here that we don't have an emulator that is able to run our Super Nintendo games. So it's saying here, it's given me the option to go off and do it by myself. Or the easy way, of course, is to let it automatically install it. Uh, it'll, of course, install RetroArch and it will configure everything. So really, once we've done that, um, we are ready to play. So let's use that option. We now have to decide what's going to happen with our files. So my files are in a folder that's not part of my LaunchBox installation at the moment. So um, if, if you have got the disk space, I, I would always advise copying the files into your LaunchBox folder. As I said before, um, the LaunchBox itself, once you make it self-contained, you can then simply copy it onto a USB stick or something like that, and you can actually carry it with you. So if you want to go and visit a friend's house and bring your entire games collection with you, you can actually do that. Just simply plug in your USB stick, and you can then play all of your retro games on that other computer. So I'm going to copy my files into my LaunchBox games folder, which gives me that, um, that, that facility. LaunchBox, 
is going to create a very nice slick front end for our games. So instead of just having a list of game names, um, what we want to do here is we want to have some sort of box art so we can we can scroll through and if we select a game, we can find a little bit about that game, maybe get some screenshots, maybe get some reviews on the game and so on, just to make the whole thing a much better gaming experience. So, so we're going to say here, so all of that extra information, we term this metadata. So, so let's tick that box and let it search for some metadata. So we, it says here, it's going to try and look for lots of different things. You can read through this list here. So it's so various bits of fan art and screenshots and, and so on. Um, depending on what you want to do, obviously the more you tick, the more space it's going to take up on your hard drive. Um, you can of course limit it to a certain number of images per section or you can untick some of the sections if you maybe only want to have the box art and so on. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it at its default settings because um, obviously I'm not bringing very many games in here. Obviously again the more things that you tick the longer it will take to import those. So let's just click on next for that. Uh, MU Movies is a paid for um, subscription service which will let you download little short clips of the games. So not only will you get, whenever, whenever we fill up this um, main application screen here, we'll have a list of all our games here. When we select a game in this area down the side, we'll get some game details. And if you have MU Movies, um, it, will, it will offer a little video of some gameplay usually. Um, but I'm not going to use that for this. So let's just click on next. The last one here allows you to set up various ways in which the games go up, so various settings for that. Um, but to be honest, um, I would always advise you just to leave it, unless you have a real reason not to, just leave it at its default settings. So once we do that, we, it's basically saying, okay, we're ready to start importing and installing things for you. So it's found the Super NES games, and of course it's going to also import and install RetroArch for us. So let's see what happens when we click on the Finish button. So LaunchBox has just finished searching for the metadata, and it's now downloading and installing RetroArch for us. Now that it's installed RetroArch and imported our game files, it's now actually downloading all of our box art and so on. And you can see it, the interface building up actually on the screen now. And this is going to be our interface for playing our games where we can see some nice box art, get some information about our games, and then just double click and we should be able to play it. So, so let's just let that finish off downloading and then we'll see if it all works. So that's everything all installed and set up now. As you say, we've now got metadata. So if I select any of these games, we should find that metadata then popping up in this right hand column. So you can see here, we've got um, some screenshots and we can have a look through. So we can get a little, little bit of a feel if, we've never, if we don't know what this game is. We've got some information about the game, a little um, bit of information about the game itself and what, how it plays. And again, you'll, you'll get this then for each of the games that we have imported into our system. To play a game, I just need to have my controller plugged in. Then if I double click on one of these games, that should launch my emulator. So that's the Super NES all set up and running and RetroArch installed and configured for it. And that was pretty simple, just dropping in some game files and letting um, LaunchBox do all the work for you. And most of the consoles that um, the system supports will be exactly the same, where you'll just simply need to supply some game files and then everything will get set up for you and you can start playing your games. Some of the consoles do require a little bit of extra software. Uh, and one we're going to look at now is the PlayStation. Now that needs something called a BIOS ROM attached to it. So there are, there are some um, software that's built into the console, which the emulators can't supply to you legally because it's still under copyright. Uh, and these BIOS ROMs or, or, the, or the firmware ROMs, they, they, you need to download those separately and then integrate it into your installation. But again, LaunchBox is going to help you do all of this. 
So let's have a look at how we get a PlayStation um, up and running inside LaunchBox. So again, to install our PlayStation system, we first of all need some game files. And I've, I've got a few sort of downloaded here already. And then as I said, we're going to need this BIOS file. Now, there are a range of BIOS files for the PlayStation, but the one that um, LaunchBox is specifically going to ask for is this 5501 uh, binary file. Um, it, it's not so important which one you have, as long as you do have a um, BIOS file. Um, but say, so since it's going to ask for this one, uh, that's the one we're going to use. And again, th they are very easy to find out there on the internet. Just, just search for that file name and they'll come up pretty much straight away. So let's jump into our LaunchBox um, installation. And then if we go to this little uh, hamburger up here and pull that down, we can then go to our tools and we're going to import and we're going to import some ROM files. And again, you can see we're back into our ROM import wizard. So if we go next on that, we'll go and find our files. So let's just highlight our game files. And again, uh, diff different um, uh, um, consoles will have different file name extensions. And again, I'm just using these um, .bin and .q files for my PlayStation. So I'm just going to open those up. And we can see those coming in here. We're now going to go to Next. It's ident identified that these are Sony PlayStation um, ROMs. So if we go on to Next for that, it's saying um, it understands that it can set up retro arts to play these for us. And again, if, if, if you do want to change that round, you can do. But of course, we're just going for our easiest setup here. And the important thing here is to tick the box that says automatically download retro arch cores. So, so retro arch cores are the emulators for the different games consoles and computers. Uh, and you have to have the correct one installed to allow it to play a particular a system uh, such as a PlayStation. So what that's is saying here is uh, LaunchBox is going to automatically find the correct core for our console and download and install that into RetroArch. So of course that's what we want to leave ticked. So click on next for that. Now this is where it's asking for this BIOS file. And again, you can see it's asking for this 5501 BIOS file. So we just go to browse on that. And you can see it's coming up in our, in our directory here. I just select that file, open that, and it will then copy that file into my LaunchBox installation and put that in the correct place. It, um, these BIOS files do have to go into a particular folder inside LaunchBox. But of course, it's gonna sort all that out for us. Then we're just going to go through the same as before. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I'm going to copy the files into my LaunchBox folder. I'm going to download the metadata. I'm going to skip all the rest of this here and just use the default settings. And at that point, we should now be ready to import our games. And if I click on finish, then we can let that run through. So once all that's downloaded, we should find then that our little list of consoles here is building up. And we've now got our Sony PlayStation. And we've got our games. Again, our media files should all be down here. We can have a look and see what's going on. And of course, we can then double click and that game should now start and play. So that covers the consoles. And as I say, all the rest of them will load in very much the same way. And very few of them do require these BIOS files to, to run. So let's look at some home computers now, because these do take a little bit more setup. And we'll start with the ZX Spectrum. So getting it all set up is exactly the same as we did for the consoles, where we're going to import some files again, import the game files, and then let uh, LaunchBox do all of the setup for us. But when we get to play a game, we'll find that some of the controls are not actually working. In this case, in the ZX Spectrum one, none of the keyboard is, is working in our game. So we do need to set that up. So pressing the F1 key in RetroArch will take you to the main menu. And from there, we need to go into our controls menu, our port one. And that's where we can actually start mapping our Kempston joystick to port number one. And then if we go back up to our um, controls, we then need to map port three to our Sinclair keyboard. 
Once we've mapped those, we then need to actually save those settings so that it sticks for our next game. And we save our core remap file. And now we should be able to go back up to our game and that should now play with our keyboard working. And there we have us able to control the character now. Now these um, setups will actually be slightly different per uh, emulator. So this is setting up the ZX Spectrum emulator. It'll be a little bit different for something like the Commodore 64 and, and so on. Uh, and that is something which you'll just have to work out. And I do have some videos for these particular emulators. Um, so you will need to work your way through those to get each of those particular systems set up in your LaunchBot control. But of course, um, the actual installation of the emulators and getting it actually connected up correctly it is all done for you by LaunchBot launch box is just the final sort of tuning of getting all your mapping done which you need to do by yourself. But that will then let you carry on and install various other home computers then and again there's a wide range which you can use from within um, this RetroArch. So now that we've got our consoles and home computers sorted out the really last thing to do is to look at arcade emulation. Now this can be done through RetroArch uh, and you can just sort of load some games in, uh, but the much better way of doing it is to actually use a version of MAME. So, so MAME is pretty much the best arcade system emulator um, out there. And LaunchBox has an auto setup feature for this. So, so previously you would have to sort out which version of MAME you were going to use, and there are a lot of versions, um, and then match up games with that, and then install that and hook it up into LaunchBox. But um, Luckily now, uh, LaunchBox is going to do all of that for us. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to get hold of some games. And our, our LaunchBox setup is going to need something called a full ROM set. Now, main ROM sets and versions can be a little bit confusing, so I have actually made a separate video which um, goes into that in a lot more detail, which will help you understand exactly what types of ROM sets there are, which versions, uh, and how to match them together. It will also give you a couple of tips on, on where you might start looking to get hold of these files. But um, in this video, I'm, I'm going to assume that you've managed to get off and find a full ROM set and download that. So I have a full set of main ROMs here, and I'm using uh, an older version which I downloaded a while back, which is not 0.232. So these are sitting in a folder on my, on my hard drive. Uh, and really what I need to do is I need to copy these into my LaunchBox folder. So, so we, we can use the files from wherever we happen to have them stored. But again, this idea of making my LaunchBox installation portable it is a really useful feature that I can then take it away and, and either copy it onto another computer or, or play it on another computer. So if we look in our LaunchBox folder, you'll find there is a games folder. Um, again, because we have been installing some games, um, LaunchBox has set all of this up for us. And if you look inside there, you'll see the um, systems that we've already set up. So um, if you have not yet set anything up, if you're doing your MAME installation as your first one, then, then do just simply create a games folder in your LaunchBox folder. And then just copy all of your game files into a folder on here. So I could make a new folder here, call this MAME, and then I would simply copy all of my ROM files into this folder. And that just keeps everything together. Um, when we go through the automatic installation process, because there is uh, these um, MAME ROM sets can be sort of you know, 40, 50 gigabytes of data, um, it will not generally allow you to copy them um, into your main folder automatically so um, it will just use them from where they are so we'll just copy it in here manually so that we keep everything in one place so let's have a look at launchbox then and get that to set everything up and install everything for us so again we're going to go up to our menus here into tools and import but now we're going to use this main arcade full set import uh, wizard so let's start that up here. So again, this, the wizard's starting up. Really what we need to do now is, a lot of this is going to just be accepting the default settings. So what, what do we want to call our arcade system? Uh, so arcade seems like a reasonable choice for that. 
We then need to tell it where our ROMs are. So let's go across and browse out to that. Um, now, I, I'm, I haven't copied this across into my main system, so I'm just going to go and find them where I'd, I'd left them last time, which are in my emulators and main and ROMs. Um, if you have downloaded a full set, um, quite often it will be able to identify what version that is. Um, but again, I mine hasn't done that, so I'm going to tell it this is a 0.232 version. And again, do do look at that video explaining about ROM sets, so you can understand um, why you need certain versions of MAME matching up with your ROM set versions. So once we've got that set up, we just simply click on next. And we're going to ask it here to automatically install everything for us. Uh, again, that is just as the easiest way. So that will download and install MAME, configure it, and connect up our games. So let's let that just download. Okay, so once it's installed MAME, we really just need to set up the last few options on how we want our game collection set up. So in this first screen then we can connect to the LaunchBox Games database and that allows you to sort of get um, leaderboards and high score tables and so on. Um, and it, again, do, do hook up to that if you want to, but I'm just going to skip over that. We then of course want to download the metadata for our game, so all of our box arts and so on. Uh, and again, that's just exactly as it was in our previous settings, so I'm just going to leave that all at defaults. I'm not using MU Movies. And then we need to look at how we're going to filter and sort our games. So LaunchBox understands that the full main ROM set is, is a few thousand games. So it's, it's worth having those organized in a way uh, and missing out any, ver any ones which you don't really want to have in your collection. So in this one here, we're going to look at the idea of clones. Um, so again, please do look at that video on main ROM sets to understand what clones are. And this is, of course, we're just going to use the recommended settings here, which will import the clones as additional versions of games. And again, as I say, you, you, it'll explain what that means in, in that last tutorial video. We can then specify what sort of region we want to prioritise and what versions of games we want to prioritise. Uh, again, I'm, I just tend to leave these all at the default settings, but if you want to change those, obviously you can. It's then going to ask us which games we want to skip importing. So there are certain games here which either are not going to work or which you might not actually be bothered about having in your system. Um, so things like sort of fruit games and mechanical games, which don't really work so well in MAME. But again, have a look through that and see what you think. Going on to the next screen then, we can have it skip certain games that need certain types of inputs. Uh, again, um, the MAME will allow you to use your, your mouse and so on, depending on what on what the game requires. Um, so I, I tend to leave those all, all set up, so at least I can have a go at playing some of the games. If, if they don't work well, well, fair enough. We then have this idea of playlists. So this is where LaunchBox is going to automatically categorize your games for you so that you can get into them a lot more a lot more easily. So say it's going to group together things like racing games or shoot 'em up games and, and so on. And that just lets you browse your collection that that much more easily. So I'm just going to leave all those at the default settings. If they're now going to have a look and see what games we've actually got in our ROM set. So let me just let that um, work its way through. So once we've let it parse through there, we can see it has found um, quite a few games. And all of those then are the ones which is going to now import and link up with our LaunchBox system. So let's just let that go and I will see you when that has finished. And just as a bit of a heads up, uh, do be aware that this process can take a few hours to complete. So once everything has finally installed then, you should find that your LaunchBox installation has a new arcade section. Inside that you'll find that it has automatically classified a number of the games into various uh, playlists. So we have here things like Atari Classics or Capcom Classics and so on. Each of these then, if you say if you have ticked for that um, metadata download, you should find that each of these then comes up with its um, game screens and so on, game information and everything like that. And of course then, if we simply then double click on any of these games, they should now be all ready to play.
So that's your full retro gaming PC all set up with consoles, home computers and arcade stuff now. And hopefully you've seen that using the launch box auto install feature, that makes that process incredibly easy. So all that's left to do is to import some more games for your other consoles and get those all set up and running automatically within LaunchBox and then just sit back and enjoy your retro gaming experience. So hope you find this tutorial useful. Please do click the like and subscribe buttons to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Have loads of fun playing all those classic games and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. So, bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.